Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. On today's episode, we're talking about this DeWalt seven and a quarter inch brushless FlexFold Advantage circular saw. This is um, kind of sits in between their 18 volt or 20 volt max and their FlexFold lineup. It kind of you know gives you another option or bridges the gap between the two. Anyways, we're gonna go over this saw top to bottom, see how it stacks up against some other tools on the market. Stick with us. All right guys, so this right here is DeWalt's 20 volt max, seven and a quarter inch brushless circular saw marketed under their FlexVolt Advantage lineup. In case you didn't really know what that means, it pretty much means it can use their 18 volt or 20 volt max batteries and their FlexVolt batteries. And if you use a FlexVolt battery, it gets more power than, uh, or generates more power than it would if you were using a 20 volt max battery. That's pretty much what FlexVolt Advantage means. So FlexVolt Advantage right now is only sold at the depot. And if you're at Lowe's, it's gonna be called pretty much Power Detect. But they both generally have a feature where it's like if you're under load, and it's draw, drawing power from the battery and the resistance is remaining pretty much low, it's able to draw pretty much more power, able, allowing the, cell, the uh, tools to produce more power. That's pretty much what that means. So anyways, the point is, um, they're also you know, kind of expanding their lineup or whatnot because they feel like you know, if, you're, if you're in one lineup, like the FlexVolt lineup or in your 20 volt max lineup, they don't want to you know, make you get stuck in one or two of the options and they kind of give you another option to buy one that bridges the gap, right? So apparently this saw produces a lot more power according to their marketing uh, when using a flex volt battery, okay? So no matter which battery you use, a 20 volt max or a flex volt max or you know, flex volt battery, um, this saw pretty much still operates at its 18 volt level, okay? Anyways, the point is, let's go take a look at the marketing height and it will bring you in closer and take a better look at it. Actually, as we're trying to take a look at their marketing hype, it looks like the DeWalt website is down. And it's not just down for me because I did check it to see if it's down for everyone or just me. So we'll just go ahead and take a look at some of the notes that I already took here. So this saw pretty much maintains, uh, maintain performance under load. They do advertise that. Take advantage of more power with flexible batteries. And if you use a DCB606, it produces up to 77% more power than using this saw with a DCB205 battery. That's actually a very interesting claim. Anyways, let's go take a look at what some of the other stuff says. Get more power with the DeWalt 20 volt max brushless tools with this FlexVolt Advantage technology. This saw produces up to 77% more power when paired with a DCB606 FlexVolt battery, as we just talked about, than a DCB2, uh, 20 volt max 205, which is pretty much five amp hour battery, okay? It has faster cutting, powerful brush. This motor spins at roughly 5,500 RPMs. Maximum depth of cut at 90 degrees is two and nine sixteenths. And if you do it at 45 degrees, it comes down to two inches. It has electronic brake, increased visibility with the LED light, it has easy storage with the rafter hook, minimizes dust uh, with the optional dust port with DeWalt's airlock system or using pretty much a standard 35 millimeter dust extractor. Um, that's interesting mainly because DeWalt is one of those brands I think right now, it does not include the dust port adapter on their saw, unlike some of the other brands, you know, like Makita or even actually the Milwaukee does. But DeWalt for some reason said, you gotta go buy it yourself. Um, as tool connect chip ready, has a chip pocket to accept the tool connect chip. You do have to buy that option separately as you would expect. The model number on that, if you wanted to buy that, was a DCE042. It's pretty much compatible with all 20 volt max and flex volt batteries. And it comes with the standard tool warranty of three years limited lifetime warranty and one year free service and 90 day satisfaction guarantee. All right, obviously this right here is the business end of the saw. Um, if you're holding the saw, it's pretty much the blade has gone to right. Some people call that blade wrong, but this is the top handle saw, blade right. Uh, they, this is pretty much aluminum shoe. All this stuff here, you know, as you would expect, pretty standard. This is not plastic. Uh, I know some of the other, you know, saws and maybe this class may be plastic, but this is not plastic. Rubber stop here, nothing too much going on here. There is pretty much like a ruler or a legend, if you want to call it, stamped into this aluminum, going from zero to right around like eight and a half, uh, maybe a little bit more. But anyways, this is metal and pretty much all the stuff around here is some sort of metal. There is not a lot of like plastic pieces on here as you would see in some of the other maybe cheaper saws or whatnot. Anyways, the point is this right here is where the dust uh, port adapter would go if you were to buy that optional accessory. I'm actually really sad DeWalt doesn't include that. I think they should, kind of like the other manufacturers do. Anyways, uh, moving around to the front. So moving around to the front here, you know, this is pretty much where their bevel adjustment is. Um, before we talk about that, let's talk about this. 
spin the lock, that's how you would change the blade, you know, just lock it, change the blade out. Anyways, on this um, bevel adjustment, it does, it does have some positive detents, right? So if we go here, it will stop, but it's kind of easy to overgo if you're just moving really fast. Um, I could eventually see it, you know, wearing out over time and you may not feel it, but haven't had too much of that issue anytime recently. The interesting thing about this bevel adjustment is that there's actually two bevel indicators um, on the exact same um, adjustment mechanism, right? So right here, if you look right here, there is an arrow that points, you know, saying this is pretty much where you're at, right? And then there's also another arrow right here See if we can bring in closer, maybe we'll throw up a picture that pretty much uses this uh, stamped in um, guide to pretty much tell you where it's at. And on this part right here that sticks out is also pretty much the same thing. So you can either read the, uh, the bevel adjustment here or you can read the bevel adjustment here just in case you, know, you weren't sure and you wanted to verify or double check your bevel cutting adjustment, right? So um, you could do that. And it's a single, uh, single level bevel. There's nothing on the back to lock. The point is that, you know, this is metal. We have no issues with that. A lot of times you'll see, you know, things like this and this being plastic on some cells, but not this. There's also a, um, a stamped in like ruler kind of fitting here. And right here is where you would see, you know, zero degrees um, cut line. And then right here is where you would go for, you know, 45 degree cut line. So that's actually pretty interesting there. While we're on the front here, why don't we go ahead and talk about this handle. So this is a pretty much a handle, you know, nothing too froze going on there. And this is a rafter hook. And this rafter hook will only fit two by material. It's kind of like, you know, I want to say little little cheaper or light duty. Um, we'd definitely like to see one of those bigger rafter hooks, but I don't know what they would really fit that on here. But I would much rather have, you know, a rafter hook versus, you know, no rafter hook. So that's what's going on there. Um, going on around to the backside here, this is where you would put in a, you know, a rip guide, but you would also have to buy the bolt or a wing, wing bolt, I guess you want to call it. If you want to use that, it is not included on here. You do have to buy that separately. Um, going around to the other side here, you know, just pretty much logos and emblems and marketing. This stuff right here is rubber over molded. So just in case, you know, you put it down on this side, it doesn't slide around too much. The other thing to note here is, here, this is the depth guide adjustment, right? So this, um, knob or lever right here is actually plastic, but all this other stuff behind it is actually metal. Um, usually sometimes you probably give it a hard time for this thing being plastic, but this actually feels really solid. Not like that Bosch uh, Pro Factor saw that we reviewed the other time, but this, even though it's plastic, it has no doubt that it's gonna hold up, right? So bevel it, you just poke it up, down, up, standard, no frills, no thrills, right? Moving around to the back side here. So this little, uh, black part right here is where the tool connect chip would go. You know, you just take this out, put it in, bam, ready to go. And right here is where your um, blade wrench is. It is, does have two sides, you know, beveled on this side. I'm sure if you can see that beveled on this side, flat on this side. Um, it does include that there. There is no like vibration mechanism, dampening mechanism as you would see on some tools, but you know, it's a cell, so it's not gonna vibrate that much. Don't have to worry about that too much around here. This right here obviously is the trigger. Um, the interesting thing to note about this is nothing, right? If you're using DeWalt tools, this is gonna feel pretty standard. Rubber overmolded grip, safety, you know, ambidextrous, it goes this way or this way, and trigger, right? There is also a um, LED light. Let me drop this battery in here, right? Where does that light go? There you go. There's a light right here. Not sure if it's gonna come out on camera right there, but you know, it is a blade right saw. So if you're a right-handed person, um, you're gonna have to look through pretty much this spot right here to kind of really get a good view of what you're doing. Or you just, you know, kind of lean over on this side and look at it. But really they expect you to just use this side line here. Um, it's interesting. I really think that, you know, they sh if for right-handed people, they really need to put this on the left because, you know, that's just most people I think are right-handed, but we're not gonna complain about that. My guess is if you put the blade on the other side, sawdust is just shooting at you, but you could probably fix that with some kind of dust port mechanism, right? So anyways, that's what you get with this saw.
All right, I don't know how well that came across in the video, but I'll definitely tell you the Flexvolt battery felt faster, seemed faster, sounded faster, definitely felt like it had more power. Let's go take a look at the numbers. So this DCS573 with the five amp hour battery, double stack performance test, take a look. First run, 6.34 seconds. Second run, 6.13 seconds. Third run, 6.35 seconds. Taking an average of three runs comes in at 6.27 seconds, all right? Moving on to the triple stack performance test. First run, 12.38. Second run, 12.29. Third run, 12.41. And if you take an average of the three, it comes in at 12.36 seconds, all right? So remember, this saw has a uh, RPM speed of around 5,500. So, you know, it may not be able to compete with 5,800 RPM or even 6,000 RPM cells. Anyways, the point is, how, let's go take a look at the total performance number. How do we get that? We pretty much sum up the two averages. Uh, the total performance number of this cell with the 5 amp hour battery comes in at 18.63 seconds, all right? Where does that put that? That puts this saw with this battery right around 20th place, right behind the Milwaukee 2830-20, which is the M18 fuel uh, saw with a five amp hour battery, which had roughly 15.84. And, you know, in front of the Boss GKS 18B25C Pro Factor with a four amp hour battery, right? So um, it kind of sits right there. You know, what, uh, that's pretty much what you would expect, I would think, right? So uh, like I said earlier, the flexible battery definitely felt faster. So let's go take a look at those numbers. So the DCS 573 with the nine amp hour flex volt battery, right? Which is really a 20, uh, 20 volt max, uh, nine amp hour battery and three amp hour battery in flex volt mode, right? So first run on a double stack test, 3.55 seconds. Second run, 3.43 seconds. Third run, 3.46 seconds. Taking an average of three runs comes in at 3.48 seconds. Bam, all right, let's take a quick moment and stop right there. That is almost two times faster than it was with the five amp hour battery, which had an average of 6.27. Almost, not exactly, but almost. So moving on to triple stack performance test. First run, 6.37. Uh, second run, 6.40. Third run, 6.39. Taking an average of three runs. Actually, those are all fairly close together. Comes in at 6.39 seconds. That also is almost half as, uh, half as fast or two times faster, I guess you would call it. Um, you know, let's just say almost half the score of the, with the five amp battery, battery which was, you know, 12.36. Anyways, so if you take if you add up the two, you get the total performance number of 9.87 seconds, all right, with the flex volt battery. So where does that put that? Bam. That puts this saw with the flex volt battery in uh, right around 11th place, right behind the Makita um, XSH06, which is a you know, 36 volt, 18 uh, volt X2 saw, um, which had, you know, 9.56 and right in front of the Bosch Pro Factor GKS 18B25 GC uh, with a 12 amp hour Pro Factor battery, which had 9.96. We're arguing, you know, like point points here, right? Just barely points. Those are all within the margin of error. I mean, these tools are pretty much all gonna be roughly where you would expect them to be and also pretty great tools, right? So anyways, 11th place um, with this and that pushes, you know, this one down to 21st place. So what can we say? So um, this is actually a great tool, right? I mean, uh, we did go on by this tool. Nobody's going to Swift this now sponsored video. We did go on by this just to, you know, test and see how it stacks up. So what can we say about it? I'm going to tell you, we don't, I just don't have a lot of use with this tool, right? We, I just don't use this tool that much. Um, the tools that I use a lot are probably the Makita XS8 or GSR01 with the rear handle 36 volt saw and the DCS577, uh, which is the flex volt saw. Those saws are just beast. I don't know why, just like rear handle saws, maybe the blades on left, who knows. Point is, I don't have a lot of experience with the saw, but the, um, I can say, you know, just by using it a couple times, not only during testing, but, you know, um, on other stuff, that it actually is a great saw. It's pretty much, you know, you would say, some people would say well balanced, some people may not. I'd say it feels pretty well, you know, dual grips are obviously generally pretty good, um, dual ergonomics. And the point is, you get a lot more power with uh, the flex volt battery than with the 20 volt max battery, right? It's almost two times faster with this. So, you know, the marketing said up to 77% more power. It didn't say speed, I guess, but you know, some people may equate speed to power. Uh, I'm not saying that's what this is, but the point is, you know, it's almost two times faster with this. So, you know, um, it's a great option for Dewalt to put out there. 
Um, so if you are in the DeWalt lineup, or even if you have flexible batteries, um, I wouldn't buy this if you have flexible batteries. I would probably buy, you know, the flexible saw. It just makes more sense to buy the flexible saw if you have flexible batteries. But when when you would you buy this tool, I would pretty much buy it if you right now have 20 volt max batteries, and in the future you're thinking about getting flexible batteries or in the flexible lineup. That's pretty much where you would buy this saw. Or maybe you could go ahead and say, you know, I like the flexible saw, but I just want the same saw, just a little bit lighter this is probably the saw that you probably want to get, right? Because you could use 20 volt max and flexible batteries, right? So, you know, um, I have no doubt that this tool is going to hold up well. You know, Dwell generally makes pretty good stuff. All the Dwell stuff I've had generally haven't had too many issues, except some of their drills, which had really wobbly chuck issues, but that's a different story. Um, the point is, um, this is a great tool. Should you buy it? I just told you when you should. Um, we bought this. Uh, I don't know if we're just going to stay around too long. You know, it's, just, it's not a tool that we would use all the time, but... Um, other than that, I'm just glad that they put a rafter hook on it, you know, because the wall usually, for some reason, seems to like leaving off rafter hooks on tools you think they need rafter hooks on. But great tool. It's glad that you can use, you know, um, bridge the gap between both. You don't have to be stuck on one. But other than that, I'm just here to tell you numbers, right? So um, don't buy tools based on just the numbers here. You know, buy tools that, you know, you can use in your lineup, tools that you're comfortable with. I'm just here to tell you the numbers to see how it really stacks up against other tools in the market. And, you know, it stacks up actually pretty well, right? Is it as fast or as the Milwaukee saw? No, it doesn't seem like it. Um, at least not the numbers. It's not as flex the, fast as the flex saw. Um, so, if you're just looking for speed, then this is probably not all to get, but you know, hopefully you're not working on just speed and trying to actually care about the work that you do. But anyways, point is, hope this video has helped you guys out. Um, let me know if you have any questions or comments, and we'll see you guys next time.